The stars have shaped us. Environmental adaptation, atmospheric filtering running on our worlds, we have adapted even the most hostile of environments. Science has extended our lifespan to 115 years. Pursuit of perfection has made caring for mind and body the norm. Gene clinics established to treat us in alien environments developed into revitalization centers. Cloning supported our expansion. Nowadays we clone not only crops, we clone ourselves. Most of our marines are clones, the originals only serve as a national guard. We have changed much, but we remain true to our ethos. Peaceful, fanatic xenophobe, adaptable. This is our culture. A time is coming to defend it. Fanatic xenophobic isolationists, the anti-Gonge, live on their tundra world of Gonge. They explore, exploit, expand and endure. For a species that wanted nothing to do with the galaxy, the galaxy though sure had different plans. A suggestion of a non-aggression pact comes from Xabi hegemony. They want assurances we would not pursue war, something we've already sworn to do. Do not all Vexino nations also claim benevolence? If so, then why are written agreements needed? No, there is something else for it to you. I have no doubt that with both borders secure, you would be content on building up your ring world. It is we who discovered it. Our answer is no. Our worlds are getting crowded, but other than Tanafir, which an automated dreadnought is orbiting, there are no suitable targets for colonization. Sabik so too has high quality minerals, but we have no need of them with our stockpiles already overflowing. There are other worlds as well, but they are out of reach even with our current environmental technology. Support vessels are introduced. With their help, our fleets will be able to maintain a more prolonged campaigns. First, to explore the natural wormhole, Gol is our bravest scientist. He continues pursuing military reform with the introduction of standardized ship components. Through mass production, costs are reduced, efficiency increased, and our fleets become stronger. Construction complete. Drill Profan are aware of how political situation has shifted. They will no longer be able to pursue their crusades against Multics with a threat at their side. While League of Mydag is still in another war and distracted, they decide the best time to strike is now. Gib has arduously pursued battleship technology and the first designs are ready. It's tempting to go for the big guns, but our missile corvettes are still the backbone of our fleet. A torpedo upgrade gives us the biggest increase in our firepower. The battleships are designed as artillery ships, peppering their enemy from their main guns from a long distance. Telda crystals increase kinetic weapon damage. First iterations featured an all railgun setup, which was later abandoned in exchange for plasma accelerators, who helped to pierce the enemy hulls, alleviating some of the drawbacks of projectile weaponry. Two battleships are built to test them in a field, one for each fleet. They could not come at a more fortunate time. We receive news beyond the capital line of a great Kassam warlord emerging. At first they are dismissed. One warlord or another always rises momentarily only to be brought down by a rival again. This new warlord calls himself the Great Khan. Through combination of guile, charisma and military genius he has united all Kassam faction. Now that Kassam ships are no longer busy killing each other, they are turning their attention elsewhere. I am Bukura, a great Khan of the Kesem Horde. A new age is upon us. I have promised my people a new beginning through formation of a great empire. To those who would stand in our way, know this. If you oppose us, the Kesem Horde will grind you to dust. 
The Serene Protector replies, I am Fern Funch, the Serene Protector of Andy Gonch. My sole purpose is to protect my Gonch from galactic horrors like you. We have spent last 300 years in preparation for you. Come to my capital line, and against it, your lands will be broken. Plans to gradually introduce battleships into the Navy are abandoned. Immediate large-scale production of battleships begin before they can be fully tested. Voidfarers are assigned to Andak Station and Kepler Salvage to reinforce the populated Ionite system. Zabir Hegemony is the first one to be attacked. They open borders to us without asking anything in return. Thern Hoos is currently our most experienced scientist in the field. He is set to investigate Cybrex Alpha. Custom Fleet strikes at the weakest point in Capital Line, the Antex Station. The defenses can certainly hold back and treat the enemy, but they cannot stop them on their own. What theories are you assigned to Girtap should we need to protect the factories of Lesson Prime? The Xabia branding the worst of the assault. It is too late to reinforce Andak. Girtap Station is a transit hub. Its main purpose is to protect the wormhole in the vicinity, its defenses are unsuited to take on a fleet. Girtap, Ruinam Station and Ionites immediately begin large-scale construction of defensive platforms. Voidfarers arrive at Girtap, which is now sufficiently protected. They are now ready to react to incursions. Lessim Station is a purely commercial outpost, but with the threat close, it's also in force of defensive platforms. Refit standards are applied and there's no question that the next technology will also have to be of military nature. We must fully commit the society. Command Matrix is being developed to coordinate defensive efforts. The riches of a subterranean civilization we destroyed acquisition. Every little bit will help in bolstering our treasury. Kesson push through the unprotected systems. Void theorists are tasked to hold them at the Gib. Kepler Salvage cannot leave Ionites unprotected. The Andigon Giant Spire to give a fierce resistance in our core territory. We are prepared to set the price of invading our territory so high that the Horde is not ready to meet it. Drill Profana occupying Zabir's ally in a war. Needless to say, we are not pleased we cannot join forces. One of our stations is under attack. The Horde launches an attack at Bastion at Ruinam. Other than Kepler, Ruinam is the most fortified position in the Kepler line. Yet it cannot hold alone, both fleets are set to defend. The station is taken railgun and laser fire. Voidfarers are about to jump into the system when they receive news that the Kesem have been joined by a second fleet. One of our spaceports is under attack. The combined firepower of the two Kesem fleets is too much, and the defense has to be abandoned. The Yump system is a natural choke point where fleets rally there to coordinate the defense. The Kepler line is broken through. We rely on our gonch for defense. They make better bastions than ever station ever could. Our scientist arrives at Cybrex L. It has been theorized that the fall of the Kepler's line invigorated the resistance as a point of no turning back for the Stellar Compact. 
to Tsona, Craig's a historian on Surface Reply. Well, it's important to note that the address was directed not only to the Khan, but also to his own people. Despite or because of the prevalent ideology, the Serene Protectors were pragmatists. As Sepp, Surfi was very well aware of the disparity between the capabilities of a Kepler's line and the strength of the enemy forces. The address was both a reassurement and a call to bolster the bulwark of harmony. Throughout the years, Pandicons have come to treat otherness as a pathogen in need of an immune system response. This address elicits that response and in that sense is an effective strategy. Our scientist arrives at Cybrex Alpha. Cybrex Alpha is surveyed. The Cybrex once launched a galactic crusade against life, but later reevaluated its merits. They began a slow retreat from the galaxy until eventually retreated to this very system. The room again sought of clout in the pacifist faction, who believed the Kesem might do the same. We must fight back though to ensure Cybrex fate befalls them. Ruinam's fall and the breach of a capital line opens a lot of avenues of attack. Nolion Prime is a scientific planet, which now also comes under threat. For the second time in history, the two fleets are joined in a soul force, combining the whole of a stellar compact strength. Did maneuvers initiated. The fall back to Yump cut off the unprotected path deep into the compact's territory between the defense stations. But when Ironites came under threat, the combined fleet was sent to respond. Kesem sent the reinforcing fleet again as part of her doctrine. The first battle of Ironites begins. There is a lot of gonj on the surface counting on us. The corvettes move in first, delivering their torpedo payload, then close in to engage with their autocannons. The Strians move in together, intercepting enemy missiles before they can hit our capital ships. The cruisers launch their amoeba wings. The battleships rain down railgo fire from a distance. The combined fleet achieves the first victory of the war. Our admirals are learning quickly on the job. The fleet stop maneuvering to undergo repairs under 1G. Repairs are being made and destroy vessels are being replaced. The first batch drains nearly all of our stockpile, it was full just before the war. The regenerative properties of our hulls help greatly in offsetting the material cost. The enemy pushes through south while continuing to launch attacks on Ironite Station. The Gaia world is a prized possession. Construction complete. Construction complete. The fleet is forced to engage before repairs can Hostile be fully completed. Fleet detected. In a span of just two battles, our admirals learn enough to become the Raider sequels. A large custom fleet is gathering in the Ponel system. Other areas are being threatened, but this keeps our combined fleet at Ionides. Chabba. The Bakata attacked the Mandate again. This throws the galaxy into more chaos. Now is not the time to play at pity squabbles. A war against two great powers, Suri Imperium and Gorat Theocracy at once would have been enough. But now the Great Khan has taken our wormhole into the space of the Finu Mandate. Transports with materials are flowing into the Yump system. Construction ships are working shifts to raise makeshift defenses around the main station. A secondary defensive line is being built on the choke point. It all takes time, too much time. 
When the Raiders show up, the station is likely to only be half finished, yet efforts are made all the same. A third attack comes into Ionite's system. It's repelled just like the last two before. The battles are taking a toll on our prosperous economy. Fear campaign is initiated to strengthen the will to fight. Production targets are set, moons have to be stripped bare to keep up with the demand. While we have struggled, the Xabi hegemony bore the brunt of the attack. Xabi Prime has fallen to the Kesem Horde. The other wars aren't important as the hegemony is reduced to four planets. Earthquakes occur on our planet, destroying some of the infrastructure. It truly looks like the end of the world. Thankfully, we are not spiritual enough to believe it. We cannot afford to have unworked land right now. The Gurite Imperium Alliance grabs what they can before the Great Khan arrives. The Mandate had held fast before, but now it's the Kesem they have to deal with on one side, and on the other, the Devourers. The Void Tear fleet gets caught out alone against the Armada of the Voidborn. The reinforcements turn the tidings even more grim. We can't leave our fleet to be destroyed. Kepler's salvage are sent to reinforce. They arrive just in time to cover the Void Fairy retreat. Fern Funge, the admiral of the Void Fairy fleet, is a known trickster. He can manage a safe escape better than most. Same is not true for the culture of Kepler's salvaged fleet. Fernuni refuses to acknowledge the possibility of a retreat. It's two battleships, three cruisers, nine destroyers and fifteen corvettes against a single enemy galleon. The casualties begin to mount. As firepower dwindles, an order is called to retreat. After being lost in the war, the Voidfarer fleet reemerges at Girtab. The destroyer seizes its chance to have a go at Ionized Station. The charge is brave, and the battleship is destroyed. The fourth battle of Ionites is a marginal victory. Kepler's salvage are undergoing repairs at their base at Kepler. Now that Gateway Travel is finished, we can focus on more military-minded research. Construction complete. There are no good options, as shields don't do much against raiders, but it's a marginal upgrade. Ionite is under attack by a large raider formation again. Void Fairies move into position to defend. Kepler's salvage are in rough shape, but they have to lend help. Purity of mind and purpose is pursued to guard against the hostile Xenos in the galaxy. The Sergok Decimator survived because of a crisis, they are left just crippled enough so that they cannot use it. The Kesem Horde now spans multiple systems. Void Fairies arrive just in time in defense of Ionized Station. Their ships remain in disrepair after last emergency FTL jump. The Galleon support ships are pushed back. A 
A lone destroyer charges in upon hearing a distress call in a nearby system. Our ships are failing to disrepair, but the station is providing the much needed missile cover. The battle is won before the reinforcements can get here. We have mastered a new technology. Our amoeba is struggling against the enemy point defense systems. We've lost three out of the five cruisers and all the defensive platforms of Ironite Station. The losses are mounting on both of our fleets. While our ships are in repair, the Kesem used this distraction to strike at Girtap system. Ironides was a feint for a more strategic goal of Girtap wormhole. They begin their attack run on the station. Our fleets are adapting to the realities of space combat. Both fleets are in dire need of repairs. While Kepler's salvage took fire damage in the last encounter, the Void Fairy's battleship Nimhiva is leaking radiation. Despite the loss of their homeworld, the Xebri still have a sizable force to resist with. Overlord Slervus is using destroyers to wage partisan warfare. League of Maidak are busy losing their territory. Construction complete. As we are starved for minerals, the once rejected colony of Sabik is now under consideration again. Hostile Xeno fleet detected. Its high quality minerals will provide resources for the war effort. Devastated torpedoes are finished and will provide an upgrade to our corvette firepower. Engineering is working on a cruiser hull upgrade to avoid the kind of casualties we had over ionides. The Kesem have put a powerful fleet on our way to Girtab. We'll have to push them out of the system to aid the station. We're also keeping forces back, threatening a counterattack. Once we commit to Girtab, a fleet is sent to delay. Girtap station is taking heavy damage. But before it can be defended, the Sonya Starflock must be defeated. All the while while dealing with damage from previous engagements. The repairs aren't quite done, then the combined fleet is assigned to the task. Backup defenses are being prepared should we need to pull back to Yump Station. Time is running out for Girtap Station and the Kesem are keen on securing their wormhole. The Great Khan is waiting on the other side of it. The fleets are coming. Should they be late, Girta will fall. With it, Lessim is threatened, and without it, all of Gonge. <laughs>